Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. My name is Tom with LearnPythonTutorial.com and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about the pass statement. I did pick up a new mic yesterday. Uh, not too sure how well it works. Um, since it doesn't sound funny on my computer, but it does sound funny when I upload stuff to YouTube, I would like uh, if you guys could let me know if this one sounds better than the past couple tutorials. Um, anyway, let's jump into the pass statement and um, <clears throat> take a look at what it does. What is the pass statement? Well, we see it used a lot in the while loop, the for loop, uh, if statements, and functions. Um, basically what it is is a placeholder that says, hey Python, I understand that this uh, code block here requires some sort of code or the statement requires some kind of code in its uh, syntax, but right now I don't have any code to put in it, so I'm going to use pass as my placeholder and that tells Python, hey, I understand the syn syntax. I, I'm intentionally leaving this blank because as of right now, I don't know what code I'm putting there and I want to skip over it. So just treat it as a piece of code and continue on running the program. All right. So to better understand that, let's take a look at it. All right. So here we're going to just create a variable a is equal to five and then we're going to run a while loop. So while a is less than 10, we wanted to do something. Well, say I just want to test it out to make sure my syntax here was correct or something, and I said, while well, a is less than 10, just hit return. Oh, uh, wait, I can't just run that because the syntax for a while loop is I gotta have a code block below it, and it has to be indented. So that's why we get an indentation error. So a way around that is to go, while a is less than 10, I hit return, and two spaces and then pass all right now <clears throat> when I go to hit return here I'm going to go into an uh, infinite loop and to get out of that it is control C all right so I'm going to hit return hit return and right now I'm in an infinite loop as you can see I didn't get these three um, arrows here indicating that the interpreter is ready to go again so right now I'm in an infinite loop so if I do anything it's just going to keep it in there. It's not going to really bring us out out of this program that is running until we hit Control C. So I'll hit Control C and I interrupt the program and I'm ready to go again. So that's just an example of how we use the pass statement. Um, another way we can use our pass statement, which I tend to do a lot when I'm writing some programs, is I use it as um, a placeholder in functions. I kind of try to plan out my functions like hey I'm going to need a function for uh, um, I don't know one one part of my code and then I'm going to need another function for my other part of my code but I want to just kind of plan it out so I write a function. I know we haven't really talked about functions but say we're going to have a test code that tests our code, tests our program to make sure it runs properly or something like that. Test and whoops, and here's our function. But for now, until I write the rest of my program, I'm really not gonna sure how I'm gonna test my program. So what I wanna do is put two spaces, type pass, hit return, hit return, I get no errors, all right? And then I call my function two somewhere along in my program and hit return and nothing happens, which is awesome because if I did have, um, nothing in there I'm gonna get an error so let's take a look at let's say uh, define test one and two spaces hit return hit return I get an indentation error so basically what pass does is gives us the ability to get around this indentation error and continue on with our programming um, another example of this would be I'm gonna clear my screen with command K and bring it back to the top we're gonna to write a while loop <clears throat> so we're gonna say Let's say var is equal to zero. All right. Then we're going to do while var is less than five, do something. So I'm going to say var plus equals one. Um, so every time the while loop runs, it's going to add one to the to the uh, var. And we can do if var is equal 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 to one uh, do something in here I don't know what I'm gonna put as code so I'm gonna say pass now I'm gonna do elif 
var is e equal equal to two. Still not sure what I'm going to do with my code, so I'm going to say pass. And then here I'm going to do elif var equal equal to three. And in here I'm going to print something. Print uh, var is equal to. Got a brain fart there. And then we're going to hit return and run our program. And we get var is equal equal to 3. All right. That's a good way to use pass. So what happened here is while the program was running, it went through uh, the first time at var equal 1. So this if statement became true. But since we said pass, it didn't do anything. So it went to the next elif statement and when it went through uh, var now was 2 and it came here and pass because we have nothing in there it kind of just skips over it and then elif var is equal to 3 print out var is equal to 3 and then this while statement kept running until it hit 5 and since we had nothing else after that it just stopped there so that is the past statement in Python. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on YouTube or on our website at learnpythontutorial.com. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.